This measure is America's answer to the challenge facing the free world today. It is a measure of reconstruction, stability, and peace. Those who are skeptical of the effectiveness of a democratic system should ponder the lesson of the enactment of this measure. Our program of foreign aid is perhaps the greatest venture in constructive statesmanship that any nation has undertaken. It is an outstanding example of cooperative endeavor for the common good. To make this talk, I have come to the president's office in the White House. I felt that in speaking from the house of Lincoln, of Jackson, and of Wilson, my words would better convey both the sadness I feel in the action I was compelled today to make and the firmness with which I intend to pursue this course until the orders of the federal court at Little Rock can be executed without unlawful interference. In that city, under the leadership of demagogic extremists, disorderly mobs have deliberately prevented the carrying out of proper orders from a federal court. This morning, the mob again gathered in front of the Central High School of Little Rock. Obviously, for the purpose of again preventing the carrying out of the court's order relating to the admission of Negro children to that school. Mob rule can not be allowed to override the decisions of our courts. We continue to face a grave situation in Iran where our embassy has been seized and more than 60 American citizens continue to be held as hostages in an attempt to force unacceptable demands on our country. Along with the families of the hostages, I have welcomed and I appreciate the restraint that has been shown by Americans during this crisis. We must continue to exhibit such constraint despite the intensity of our emotions. The lives of our people in Iran are at stake. I must emphasize the gravity of the situation. It's vital to the United States and to every other nation that the lives of diplomatic personnel and other citizens abroad be protected and that we refuse to permit the use of terrorism and the seizure and the holding of hostages to impose political demands. This past weekend, we all reacted with anger and horror as an armed Somali gang desecrated the bodies of our American soldiers and displayed a captured American pilot. All of them soldiers who were taking part in an international effort to end the starvation of the Somali people themselves. We went because only the United States could help stop one of the great human tragedies of this time. A third of a million people had died of starvation and disease. Twice that many more were at risk of dying. I want to bring our troops home from Somalia, and I will. But we must also leave on our terms. For if we were to leave today, our leadership in world affairs would be undermined at the very time when people are looking to America to help promote peace and freedom in the post-Cold War world. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. 
I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world.